Hello, this is Wildcard speaking, and in today's episode of Automation, I want to harken back to the very first automation video I ever made. Back when Build 199 was hot off the presses, and turbochargers were just added to the engine builder, I decided to build the smallest twin turbo V8 that I possibly could. It was 0.8 liters, and it produced 335 horsepower. So now that the Steam version of the game is out, I wanted to go back and do the same thing. One of the big differences in the Steam version versus that very old version is that the smallest possible size of an engine is now a bit smaller. I uh, originally built this 600cc engine, but kind of felt it was not completely genuine. I wanted to build the smallest possible engine, so I went ahead and dropped it to 541cc, not quite as attractive of a number, but it is the smallest engine possible. Unlike the first video I made, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I did to build this engine. Uh, of course, the giveaway is already there. You can see how well the engine performs. But it's a flat plane V8. It's uh, got the best possible components that you could get. I put the, all the quality sliders all the way up because I needed every little bit of help I could get with this. As you can see, the bore and stroke is as small as possible on both of these pages. Um, the engine builder is a bit different than it's ever been before. You now build a family of engines, and this screen dictates the family of engines. Once you s create that family of engines, this screen cannot be changed. It's done. Yeah, that's it. That's all you got. So you need to plan ahead if you plan on using this platform for much of anything else. But here you still do have some leeway as to how many cc's or liters you want in your engine. Of course I have it turned all the way down because that's the whole point of this. And again, best components I could get. I decided to... where was it? Ah, it's future. Anyway, compression pretty high, cam profile all the way up. I uh, used VVT on all cams. And um... Turbocharger is pretty much all the way up as well. Fuel all the way up. I didn't need 1200 R or 12,000 RPMs. The engine stopped producing at 10,400, so I just dropped that down for a little bit more reliability. And just to give you an idea of how small this engine is, generally an engine takes up most of this area right here. This thing is tiny. The uh, intercooler just about takes up more space than the engine does. But anyway, I'll go ahead and give you a, a run through of this engine now. Much like the first engine that I built like this, you can see there's virtually zero power until you get to about 8500 RPMs and then it just shoots straight up. Uh, that's because I'm using a fairly big turbo for this engine and there's a lot of latency. So another big difference is that first engine that I built had pretty much zero reliability. It would run the dyno and die immediately after. Its service life was 0.01 hours, essentially. This engine is actually reliable, and that has a lot to do with these quality sliders here. Uh, the original engine, I believe, did not have quality sliders, so you just had what you had. But now you can adjust that as well, and it shoots the material cost and the production units way up. This engine, because of its reliability, actually could be used in a real car. Uh, it wouldn't be very practical with this huge astronomical cost, and also wouldn't be very practical because of this power curve. You would basically have to set up your transmission to where the car was always running at 8,000 RPMs or higher, and that does not work well in traffic. 
or even on the highway for that matter. So, not a practical family car engine, but it could possibly be used as a race engine. Anyway, that concludes this video, and I am now going to do a review of the entire game, since it's fresh out on Steam. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and hope you tune in for the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Take care.